if you have an organization like ours who buys for previous competitors, there's sort of a built-in competition amongst us because we have that initially. But for an organization that may be growing organically, there might not be um, a competition that's going on within your organization. In other words, it, and that's a friendly competition um, model. It's something that people, I guess the, the best way to explain this is people that get in a rut and just go along in the same level, they have no re room or reason for improvement and they don't have any possibility of decline because they're in a union and they're gonna get paid whatever until they retire. And there's no reason they should get better or worse and they're just gonna stay, stay stagnant forever. Uh, if you bring a sports team or a team management design to your program, it will instill a little bit of friendly competition in the group, as well as cooperation. Um, like I said, our um, four hospices that we have are previously competitors, um, but now we have to realize that we're not going against each other. And anyways, we weren't in the same markets to begin with. Um, but we're now all on the same team, and if we contribute as four, a sum of four parts, we're obviously going to be way stronger than the, than the individual parts. Uh, the second thing, orchestrate early wins. This is really important for um, new hires. What you need to do right from the bat is get people on your team, treat them like new teammates, and instill the values that your program has. You need to get ready for those preseason wins or the first few games of a football schedule. If you know anything about um, college football, there's about 12 games. And if you lose in your second game to Appalachian State, perhaps you don't have any chance at a national championship later on at the end of the season. Um, you have to pretty much go undefeated. And if you're in the uh, basketball tournament, you have to win the first round game or else you can't win the national championship. So a lot of times people, groups, organizations will forget about the early wins. you get a new hire in, for example. Um, you won't give as much to her or him at the initial orientation or training, and then that player will not develop into an all-star, and you guys won't be winning at the end because you forgot to win at the beginning. So set up with early wins. Number three. Um, break out of losing streaks. This is a lot like number one in that you have to break out of stagnancy. A losing streak is a decline trajectory. Um, if you're on a decline trajectory, you have to break out of the losing streak or else it will continue to snowball. Um, I wasn't going to use my Pistons example this early, but I have to here. <laughs> and that is, what's happened with the Detroit Pistons is they started losing early in the season and then People started saying stuff, the coach would say something negative about the player, just something small. And then the player would say, well, the coach, and eh, he doesn't know. And then at timeout, later in the season, at timeouts, the media would pick up on the players not giving the coach their full attention during the timeouts. And they would make a big deal about, about it in the press. And so what happened is, gradually through the season, something so small, it's just one sentence or two sentence comments after the game has now blown up into the Pistons being the uh, least in tune with each other, the most discombobulated um, team in the NBA. And their record represents it. They were at the very bottom of the NBA this year, and they were actually one of the uh, worst teams in the NBA with the most losses. And it all began in that first week um, of the season, and it just continued to snowball. So there's times when you need to <coughs> Um, break out of a losing streak. A lot of times that occurs by number five, and that's calling halftime, or at least calling a timeout um, to practice. Getting back into the swing of things, um, drawing folks back in to the stream, the flow that they need to be in, you need to call a timeout. And sometimes that timeout needs to be pretty drastic. Sometimes it can occur with, um, I like that they're having these here, uh, town hall meetings. Um, sometimes it needs to be a vacation for yourself. Sometimes it needs to be just a 360 in the way you operate 
um, anything to really break out of the mold because a timeout is not just a one-hour staff meeting or an employee survey or anything that you've done for the past 10 years that you do every single year. That's not a timeout. Timeouts need to be drastic. They're a stop and play. They're a commercial. They're when the game's not even on. So that's what a timeout is. Uh, number six, uh, using the team theme, you need to keep the membership stable. Some of the most successful teams, at least in the NBA especially, uh, would be the San Antonio Spurs. They've had an all-star, Tim Duncan. He's probably been on their team for 15 years. You keep a stable team with a stable coach and an all-star player on your team, you're going to have great success, just like the Spurs had. Um, and then the seventh point, study game video. That's really important um, in the sports world. That's how teams and co that's how coaches bring lessons to players, and players learn in preparation for their next opponent. So watching game tape is very important. If you can think about how that translates to your organization, um, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, a, for us. I'll give you an example. We have a music therapist and uh, she did a video of her with a patient. So we show that at our team meeting, um, and that's watching game tape, right? And what it does is it gets all of the, the nurses, you don't get to see this on a daily basis, because it's just one in-home visit, the whole team's not there. It opens their eyes to what everybody else is doing on it. Uh, what else is going on with everybody else, or what everybody else is doing. And that was, uh, it's the, that was the highlight of our last team meeting. That was something that caught our CEO's eye. It was something that caught the eyes of other entities in our organization. And it was a very impactful thing. And that, what that was was watching game tape. So you want to remember that um, for something that's very impactful. And it helps you prepare for your next activity, your next visit. Um, if you're a nurse or your next executive management team, if you're an executive. Uh, Cleves likes to begin his day with a haircut from his personal, personal barber, um, Rasim Riley, at the chop shop on Cloud Road in Flint. From there, he picks out his wardrobe, like the one he has in the picture, a very sharp pinstripe suit, and reads over the topics sent directly from the producers via his email. Then he gets to the set two hours in advance to further discuss a few key points with his coworkers. And once all that preparation is done, at about five, six, seven o'clock, he delivers as a, a game analyst. So I want you to pull out the, uh, the team's day handout. And I'm really keeping a lot of what we're doing in here very simple. I know that throughout the weekend you're going to have really advanced metrics and you know graphs and stuff like that. And to be honest, I had that in my prior presentation, but I reformatted it into this. I think this is more effective. You see Mateen's day, and I want you to uh, list out your typical day there. There's just uh, some sample times. For my day, I would say email, appointment, 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 email, appointment. That's what it's saying. Okay, so the reason this is in here and the reason it's here so early is because the first time I gave this presentation, I'm preaching team leadership, individual leadership, team atmosphere. Um, and the feedback I got from the group was, John, you're, you're presenting to a bunch of CEOs and they don't have a spare minute in their day to focus on any of the things in your presentation. They said you need to ask them what they do in their day and go from there. So um, uh, I'll start over here and ask what do you do at 8 o'clock. Okay, so we just went through the activity of what makes up your day. And the purpose of that activity in the limited time we have is to look at it and use the tools we talk about um, in the rest of the presentation to think about ways you can integrate team building, motivation, um, and ways that you can invigorate and empower the individuals that are outside of all of those activities that you just made. 
go ahead. I like to do something at first thing in the morning is I go around the building and say good morning to everybody and I say them by name. That is beyond this kid out here. That's one of the that's one of those tips. It is. Um, when you that's I'm glad you bring that up. When you're checking your email. You are responding to all the emails that are in your email inbox, right? It would take, what, five minutes max to send an email to a random person on your team about uh, anything, <laughs> uh, the weather, the day, uh, their kids, uh, anything like that. So I know I, it's, it's something um, that catches me up too. It's like, I have 30 emails in my inbox every morning, and I want to reply to each one first. But if I just reply to five, and then I send out my own, um, in just inspiration or invigoration to one of my volunteers, I'd get so much return from my email hour process than I would if I just replied to all 30. You know, So it's something like that, absolutely very, very important. Worse, and they're just going to say stay stagnant forever. Uh, if you bring a sports team or a team management design to your program, it will instill a little bit of friendly competition. It, and that's a friendly competition. Um, model. It's something that people, I guess the, the best way to explain this is people that get in a rut and just go along in the same level, they have no re room or reason for improvement and they don't have any possibility of decline because they're in a union and they're gonna get paid whatever until they retire. And there's no reason they should get better. If you have an organization like ours who buys for previous competitors, there's sort of a built-in competition amongst us because we have that initially, but for an organization that may be growing organically, there might not be um, a competition that's going on within your organization. In other words,